Okay, so today's tool tip, I'm going to show you how to use a drill press. So these tips are going to help you make more efficient, safer, accurate cuts. It will also help you to prolong the life of your drill bit. And well, drill press seems pretty straightforward. Put in a bit, turn it on, and pull the lever. Well, from a fabrication side of things, that is completely inaccurate. There is many factors to drilling or milling or any operation you do with a drill press that you really should follow to make it more accurate and safer in the long run. So I'll just give you some of the basic ones since many people who are woodworkers are going to end up needing to drill into a piece of steel at some point or another. And you may not necessarily need to drill into really thick steel. So I'm going to give all of the tips that you would most commonly run into with just any kind of drilling operation. Now this is exclusive to steel or, you know, steel metal drilling, not so much wood. Wood's a whole nother area to get into. First and foremost, mounting a drill bit. Okay, well that seems pretty straightforward. Do not insert it all the way until the bottom's out. On smaller bits, what will happen is when you put this in and bottom it out, you'll notice, I'm oh, this one's really deep, but what you'll notice when you insert a smaller bit is you'll be able to go completely past the little flutes here. I guess that's what you call these. So what you want to, when you go to clamp it down, you'd be crushing right onto those little flutes. And reasoning why that's bad is hopefully obvious. The simple fact that you will then wear out that part of the drill bit, so it won't necessarily be as sharp, but moreover, it will not give the chuck the ability to get a good even clamping onto that drill bit. So, okay, so first and foremost, don't bottom out your bit for the first reason being you don't want to clamp on the threads. Now, the second reason I was taught is it's a good idea not to bottom any bit out. You want to keep a bit of an air gap. Supposedly, that will help to keep the bit cooler. So, don't know if that's really true, but that's what I've been taught, so I try to follow that. Don't clamp onto the flutes and you keep it cooler. Now, we come to tightening. This is something I rarely see people ever do. Well, as you notice, there are three points of contact on a chuck. So, reason would tell you, you don't want to just go in here and just grab the first hole and just tighten it down. So what you want to do is kind of walk around and evenly tight each one of those until you feel you've got a nice efficient clamping and that does a couple things one it makes sure the jaws are evenly clamping onto the bit and then in turn what that will also allow is or it helps to assure that this bit's going to be more parallel to the surface and always a good test i do before anything is you turn it on and look at your bit and make sure it's not wobbling at all now, there's two problems if you just notice in that there is some wobbling. Well, there's two reasons for that. One, this chuck needs replacing. Secondly, these are Harbor Freight drill bits. And I will be honest, they aren't of the best quality. But once again, with these tips that I'm going to present to you, or I am presenting to you, will also help you to be able to buy cheaper bits and make them last a little bit longer rather than spending out a huge investment in really expensive bits. Okay, so we got all that. It's square, it's straight. As mounted correctly. So the next step is what you're going to drill. And in this case, I'm going to be drilling a pretty small part. So I highly recommend you get yourself some sort of a clamping device. And a vise works the best. And one thing I haven't gotten yet that I really recommend is getting yourself a XY table or clamp, a vise. What do you call that? A uh, vise. Yeah an XY vise and that will allow you to mount it to your work table and then you've got two hand cranks so you can kind of position where you want it to be. So but this will work just fine for this application and in most applications this is really all you need but you really should have some way of clamping your material down and because this is a more precise drilling I'm going to be doing I don't want it wobbling all over the place. Then that goes into the next tip that's more of a safety concern and many people are confident enough just to hold the workpiece. So you've got something like this and it's kind of awkward. It's not really going to fit in my vise. It's not 
It might even be so far in or small enough that your clamp won't reach it. So you end up being forced to hold this with your hands. And that's fine. You just need to be extra careful because you've got to be aware that there's a good chance the bit will get caught and it'll want to spin the material. And this is where my little safety tip comes in is when handling metal, I highly recommend you always wear gloves at all times because there's so many sharp little edges. You're going to slice yourself up pretty good. But when it comes to a drill press, I would like to urge you not to wear a glove, at least on the hand that's going to be anywhere near this cutting blade. Because I've even seen firsthand what can happen and say this goes to slip and you were holding on to it. Well, for that split second, you might pull your hand away, but it might be too late and this drill bit will grab your hand and pull it right in and turn it into hamburger meat. And it does it pretty quickly. In my fabrication class, the guy in front of me, he did that. And fortunately, I was right there to hit the power button, so it didn't do too much damage, but it did come up pretty good. He actually had to get some, uh, I'm not sure if he had to get stitches, but I think he should have. So anyways, that's my safety tip, is also not to wear a glove. And so along the lines with the safety, if you're not wearing a glove, and say you're going to have something big, or say, say some piece of steel like this, okay, and it's long enough, what I tend to do, and I'm going to hold it, is you can wedge it up against the column of your drill press. And what this will help you to assure is that even though you're holding it with your hand, if all of a sudden it catches, well, it's already wedged against here, so it's not really going to go anywhere. So just a couple of safety tips right there. Whenever drilling in anything, even wood, you should always put a little divot in there, a little center punch. You know, I have this one that I had made a while back for steel, and that definitely helps you to make sure you've got the drill bit right where you want it to go. And moreover, especially like on this shinier surface, that drill bit, no matter what you try, it's just going to be sliding all over because it's so slick. So you really have to put that little divot in there. Okay, so let's get our uh, little vise lined up here. Okay, so let's get this set up. So our, okay, lock it down. All right, well, let me go through the next steps because they're all going to kind of happen in succession. Okay, so the first most important step that will prolong the life of your drill bit is making sure you have sufficient oil. Just a little drop. You don't need to just soak this thing, but that alone will definitely prolong the life of your drill bit, especially when you're using something of like this, the Harbor Freight caliber. So the next tip involves what is referred to as speed and feed. You have the speed that the bit is turning and then the rate at which you're feeding the bit into the material. And that is all subjective to everything from the material being cut into, whether it's aluminum, steel, mild steel or stainless, and the thickness. So you have RPM. I'm not going to get into all those specifics. There's a, there's charts you can find that'll tell you exactly. Even your drill press will probably give you ideas of what RPM you should be at. But the biggest technique I wanted to give you as a tip that will also give you better improved results is when you pull down that drill bit, try your best not to just grab your fist in there and use all that arm strength to pull down. Try your best to finesse it by pushing and you will find you have very precise control over that drill bit's feed rate by pushing rather than pulling. Um, and something that you, you probably may or may not have heard of the term called gamification. Well, along with the feed, a, way of, a fun way to know if you're at the right feed based on the speed is by these little pigtails. And so the gamification part is, is whenever I drill a hole, I try to see if I can get a pigtail all the way through the drilling motion. And, and by doing so, it keeps you aware of what you're doing at all times. I don't even have to think about it because it's kind of a fun little challenge. As you see, I've got these little souvenirs over here. Don't know why, but I do. So let's go ahead and let me see if I can do an example. Let's see what kind of pigtail I can get. Well, it went shooting off, so I'm not sure where that went, but hopefully you saw how the pigtail was coming out, and then you know that I was at the right speed and feed. So that pretty much covers all of the tips. Don't bottom out your bit. Make sure you equal clamping. 
oil, speed, and feed. So I hope those tips were helpful. And if you have any other questions or comments, please put them down in the little box down below. And make sure to like this video, share it if you want. And until next time, you guys, you take care.